So, this proof that x n converges to uh, so, if con x n converges to x in probability, then x n converges to x in distribution. Okay. So, this proof so is as follows. So, let us so, so you so now you fix epsilon greater than 0, then you have so you have f n of x. So, you are going to assume that convergence in probability uh, is convergence in probability, then you have to prove that there is convergence in distribution. Okay. So, f n of x is equal to probability that x n less than or equal to x which is equal to the probability that x n is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to x plus epsilon plus probability that x n less than or equal to x and x greater than x plus epsilon. Okay. So, I am just splitting this up into these two. Okay. I am trying to prove this implication, right. So, this is less than or equal to. So, if you look at this joint, so if you look at this event, right, this probability is less than or equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to x plus epsilon, correct? Because this is like intersection of this and that, this less than or equal to the probability of only that, correct? So, that I can write. So, less than or equal to by say if I, by fn is the, so I actually mean fxn, okay. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to f x of x plus epsilon plus. So, what is this event? This event corresponds to, see you are saying that x n is less than or equal to x, uh, but x is greater than x plus epsilon. That necessarily implies that the difference between x n and x is greater than epsilon. So, so that is an upper bound, right. So, that is, uh, so you can write this, can you not? That you will agree with, okay. A similar argument, if you do it for the minus epsilon part, you will get f x of x minus epsilon is less than or equal to f x n of x plus probability of absolute value of x x n minus x greater than epsilon. This is a very similar argument. Thus, so if you combine these two what happens? If you combine these two you get f x of x minus epsilon minus probability of I am bringing this to this side absolute value of x n minus x greater than epsilon less than or equal to f x n of x less than or equal to now I have to work with that guy. So, that is f x of x plus epsilon plus probability that agree. So, this is just algebra right. So, I am bringing this term here right to write the first inequality 
and this inequality is something I derived here. Okay, that's the second inequality. So now, as I send n to infinity, what happens? So in this, so in this, in this double inequality, I send n to infinity, right? What happens then? Say again. So what am I trying to prove? I have assumed that convergence in probability holds trying to prove convergence in distribution. Convergence in probability holds which means if I send n to infinity, now we let n, n go to infinity that will drop out right in the limit and that will drop out in the limit for every epsilon, correct. So what I will have is that this limiting CD, so this limit will be sandwiched between f x of x plus epsilon and f x of x minus epsilon, correct. So if f x is continuous at x, I can send epsilon to 0 and then these two will so there will be a sandwich effect right. So these two will, so if epsilon goes to 0, I am only considered, see I am only concerned about fx at points of continuity of x, uh, points of continuity of fx. So when epsilon is very small, these, this and this will be equal, left limit and right limit will, will have to be equal, okay. And therefore fxn will converge to fx, right. So we see fxn of x. Uh, converges to f x of x if f x is continuous at x. Okay. So this is also done, okay, fine, any questions on this, it is actually just algebra, there is nothing very deep going on, okay. So this is done, this is done. So let me just settle this side of the story once for all, okay. So I have to prove that the reverse implication does not hold, right, by producing a counter example, okay. See the counter, so the counter example, the motivation is as follows. As I said, convergence in distribution just means that the distributions are, I mean the distribution functions are converging. It does not mean that x n and x are getting close in any sense. Whereas convergence in probability means the probability of x n and x n, x n and x being very close is close to 1, right, is not it? Or rather the limit of the probability of difference exceeding any epsilon is 0 right that is really what it means. Uh, so if you take, uh, so this is a counter example for to show that convergence in distribution does not imply convergence in probability, okay. So you let, so x1, x2 dot 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 b such that x i equal to x for all i and x is Bernoulli p for example, okay. So what am I doing? I am, this is a very pathological example but that is enough, okay. So I am taking a example where the entire sequence is just x, 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 x and so on, okay. And that x is some Bernoulli p, okay. It has value 1 with probability p, value 0 with probability 1 minus p, okay. Then, uh, then the trick is then you define, uh, 
Ha, so let's do this Bernoulli half, I think is a better idea. Let's do Bernoulli half, okay. I'm just, this is just one counter example. If I find one, that's good enough. Let y equal to 1 minus x, okay. So what happens? So whenever x takes the value 1, y takes the value 0 and vice versa, correct? So now the claim is that clearly, clearly xn converges to y in distribution, right? Correct? Why? Because xn's are all, well xn's are all Bernoulli half, y is also Bernoulli half, right? In fact, there is no convergence, they are all equal, this, the CDFs are all the same, right? There is no uh, real convergence itself, there is like all the fxn's are equal to fy, because they are all Bernoulli half, with me, good. Now what is the problem? xn does not converge to y in probability, why? But absolute value of xn minus y is equal to 1, right? Agreed? So this is a counter example to show that, it is a very pathological counter example, but that is good enough, right. So obviously xn converges to y in distribution, but xn minus y is always equal to 1. There is no way it is going to become smaller than any epsilon you want, it is always equal to 1, correct, fine, okay. So the reverse implication also is generally not true. Okay, but there is a partial converse that is true to this. Okay, this converse of this holds in a very special case, and it's a very important special case. Namely, if suppose x n converges to a constant, so the limiting random variable is a constant c, right? Then convergence in distribution and convergence in probability are in fact uh, they are equivalent notions. Okay. So this is something you can take as your homework, homework, if xn converges to c in distribution where c is a, so by xn converges to c I mean the constant random variable, right, uh, where c is an r then show that xn converges to c in probability, okay. Fine. So is the statement understood? Proof you will supply, okay. It is not all that difficult. So Convergence in probability always implies convergence in distribution. The converse is true if the limit is a constant, a constant random variable. So when the limit is a constant, convergence in distribution is in fact equivalent, okay. But generally speaking, convergence in probability is strictly stronger than convergence in distribution, okay. So by the way, so this convergence in distribution is called weak convergence because it is sitting at this end of the implication, right, it is in that sense it is the weakest notion of convergence. So I, so this side of the story we have completed, this implication we have proven, this counter implication we have given a, it is not true, we have given a counter example and we have also said that when the limit is a constant, this counter implication, this, this of the converse holds, okay, alright and this we have shown. So convergence in probability does not imply convergence in uh, rth mean or second mean you can show by simply taking a random variable 
which sequence of random variables is convergence in probability, but maybe the second moment is finite, infinite, right? Or you know, so in that situation, you may not, you, then you will not have convergence in the mean squared, for example, right? You can cook up some trivial example to knock off this implication, okay? So I think so. I will. So this is kind of this is also kind of done. Okay. So this whole bit we have completed. So the real conceptual uh, subtleties come in in this part of the story. Okay. The difference between almost sure convergence and convergence in probability. Okay. So that is where more work is needed. Okay. So. Almost sure convergence recall it says probability of omega for which x n of omega converges to x of omega that probability equal to 1. Here it says uh, so you just need that probability to go to 0 right as limit n tends to infinity. So we have to prove that almost sure convergence implies convergence in probability and then we will have to give a counter example that convergence in probability does not imply almost sure convergence okay neither of which is immediately it's not a two step neither of this is a two two step argument okay so how much time do i have about 10 minutes so let let me so i think in 10 minutes i can do a counter example for this okay to prove that convergence in probability does not imply almost sure convergence that's probably the most intriguing okay uh, this is uh, this is an interesting counter example. It's actually a standard counter example though. Counter example for convergence in probability does not imply convergence almost surely. Okay, that I will do today. Tomorrow I will prove a major theorem about convergence almost surely. A, a corollary of that big theorem will be that convergence in probability follows from almost sure convergence okay so there's one big important theorem coming up next class okay but i don't have the time to do that now so i will just do this counter example so if i show one example that's enough right let xn be equal to 1 with probability 1 over n right you would have seen something like this already i guess with probability 1 minus 1 over n okay so these xis are and xis are independent so you have a sequence of independent random variables so x2 takes the value 1 with probability half x3 takes the value 1 with probability 1 third and so on okay so as n becomes larger and larger it becomes increasingly unlikely that a value takes one the value it takes is 1 right so the larger the n more likely that it takes the value 0 right now the claim is that these xn's so what does you what do you think these xn limit to in whatever sense 0 right you would think that because they are the very high probability they are going to 0. So what we will show is that xn converges to 0 in probability but xn does not converge to 0 almost surely okay yeah okay um, so clearly xn converges to 0 in probability this is very easy why that is because limit n tending to infinity probability of absolute value of xn minus x what is x limiting random variable is 0 right so probability of xn minus 0 greater than epsilon right this is what you are looking for right you are fixing some epsilon you are looking for this probability but xn only takes values 1 or 0 so if xn is greater than epsilon then xn must be equal to 
1 right. So, this must be this is the same as limit probability that x n equal to 1 and what is the probability that x n equal to 1? 1 over n and that limit is 0 right. So, this limit is clearly 0. Okay, so, x n converges to 0 in probability. Now, I am going to show that x n does not go to 0 almost surely. Okay. Uh, the way you do that, so we will show x n does not go to 0 almost surely. Okay. Any ideas? Okay, you have independence and you have 1 over n, right. So, what do you think you will, you will do in this scenario? Huh? Borel Cantelli lemma, that is right. So, Borel Cantelli lemma, so let a n be the event that x n equal to 1, okay then a n's are independent correct. Then a n's are independent and sum over probability of a n, n equals 1 to infinity equal to infinity correct. Therefore, by Borel Cantelli lemma 2, what? With probability 1, infinitely many ANs will occur. That is x n equal to 1 infinitely often. So, x n equal to 1 infinitely often so x n does not go to 0 almost surely correct. Agreed. So, what is the saying? So, this is going back to your coin tosses, right? You can think of these as coin tosses. The nth coin toss coming up as head is probability 1 over n. You know that no matter how far out you go, Borel Cantil lemma says there will be some occasional head popping off, right? Which means if you look at this entire sequence xn, no matter how far out you go, there will be some 1 popping off, which means xn does not go to 0 almost surely. In fact, xn, uh, xn go to 0 has probability 0 right far from having probability 1 it has probability 0 right. So, x n does not go to 0 almost surely. So, so this example nicely illustrates the difference between convergence in probability and convergence almost surely ok. This shows that convergence in probability does not imply convergence almost surely, but we will prove next class that the reverse implication is true ok almost surely implies convergence in probability. Uh, yeah, so next class we will prove a theorem which actually brings out this difference very clearly, okay, I will stop here.